Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden on another beautiful spring day. And yes, I say another because I feel every single video that I recently posted with you started with beautiful spring day. But this is exactly what it is. Like this year we're so happy with the weather situation. Here the nights are very cold and frosty though. I think tonight we have minus 5 degrees Celsius. But those freezing nights are followed by clear blue skies, sun is out, beautiful days. And at noontime it gets so warm now that I don't even need to really wear a scarf and eventually not even a jacket and that thrills me so spring is definitely on its way i was out in the garden yesterday as well but i didn't really film what i did yesterday because i couldn't really find a topic for what i was doing i was just doing all sort of smaller projects and at one point it felt a little repetitive to what i shared with you nevertheless by the end of today's video i want to show you quickly what i actually accomplished because i still think it's interesting for you just to see what generally happens here in the garden what I want to do in today's video though is something that was not really top of my priority list and it went straight back onto pri my priority list after texting with one of my garden friends on Instagram the other day because she told me that her neighbor already cut the lawn. And depending on where you live this might be a good idea but she lives in the south of Germany and I believe she's in a zone 6 or 7. I'm in a zone 7B so quite comparable and she told me that her nights were even colder to what I had here. So cutting your grass at this time of the year, your lawn, is just not a good idea. Lawn is a perennial as well, it's still dormant and it needs a certain temperature to bounce back into life and if you grow, oh look Alfie is there. Um, so if you grow ornamental grasses in your own garden, you obviously know that they are most likely some of the last ones to really come back to life, depending on the variety, obviously. But yeah, this is why I would not recommend cutting your grass at this time of the year. Wait for warmer nights and warmer days in general. But there's still some good things that you can do to your lawn to make sure that it's offer a flying start for this new year to come. And this is exactly what I'm going to do today. So if you have a lawn as well, and if you're intrigued to know how you can make sure that your lawn will be beautiful this year, this might be just an interesting interesting video today for you. In some of my previous videos I already showed you how I play with Alfie and exactly those are the moments when you could see in what state the lawn is right now. There's a lot of moss in it, it's yellow, it's brown, it's patchy, it's not lush green or anything pleasant to look at at all at this time of the year but you know what that is normal. This is exactly how lawn looks after winter at least here in my garden and I'm not really concerned about it because I always get in here this time of the year and do just a few things to make sure that it will be lush green and beautiful in a month or at least two from now. So you can tell in my back already that the lawn really has a quite specific coloring going on and to change that the first thing that I want to show you is the most important thing to do which is you rake over the entire lawn. I do it manually, I really use a rake, the same one that I use for collecting all my leaves and it's not a job that you do quite nice and gentle, no you really get in there, use some strength and really make sure that you get out as much material as possible. Try to get out moss and try to get out even more importantly all the that matter that is in there. So everything that is brown is kind of like the old grass that doesn't come back anymore and once the temperatures are rising what can happen there this is gonna break down and fungi can come in and that can cause a little trouble because then those areas are infected by fungus and your fresh grass might not come back so vigorous so it is a good idea to really get out as much dead material as possible. Next to my rake I also have a second tool which I occasionally use. I'm going to show you in a moment what it is that is a little more rough even, that is more for areas where you really have a lot of moss. I need to see if I use it or not. The second thing that I do is not really to improve your lawn necessarily but to improve the visual of a lawn because at one point the lawn hits the borders and I frame all of my borders with stone, the same one that I use also for the driveway. There are all different ways on how you can frame your borders obviously. You can use brick, stone, wood, metal or nothing at all. If you use nothing at all this is when you really have the most work with that. Um, I kind of like tackle it once a year basically around this time of the year. I should do it maybe in autumn again. But then there's so many lovely projects that I just forget about it. And right now, the edges look rough. If you saw one of my previous videos where you had a closer look at them, ooh, they really need some love and attention. I normally do it with a knife, but I bought a brand new tool. I'm not really sure if it's going to work with a stone. I need to see. I had an eye on it for quite a while. 
and I couldn't resist now. So I needed to buy it. I'm excited to show you what it is and excited to show you how it works and if it works with stone at all. So let's see and test it out. The third thing that I do, and this is really now good for the lawn again, is I fertilize it. There is a autumn fertilizer and a spring fertilizer that you can apply. I always use organic fertilizer and that reacts to rain. So or when the frost basically melts down at this time of the year. So once moisture comes in, it breaks down and then it does all the goodness into the ground and the roots of the soil can, the roots of the lawn can really pick up everything so that the lawn is offer a good start. I always use organic because Alfie is running around here in the garden and so are a lot of neighbor cats and I just don't want to do any harm to wildlife, to anything. So this is why I would also recommend if you fertilize, do not buy any chemical stuff. Try and find a nice organic fertilizer. There is a fourth thing that I'm going to do and that hopefully only applies to my own garden. You know that my friend the mole is very active recently again. At the moment, luckily, just in two piles. So he just has two access to his lovely mansion in my garden. So I need to remove soil as well, but this needs to happen, I think, in an hour or two from now because the ground is still frozen, a little bit at least, at least there where the mole pile is just in my back here. So this is something else I need to do. First of all, I just want to flip the phone now and give you a closer look at those areas where the lawn is really not looking good to show you what I need to tackle. And then I show you what kind of tools I use to rake it over. This is a close look onto the lawn, how it looks. And this is actually a quite bad area as well. I mean, you can tell there's a lot of different stuff lying on the lawn as well. I think this is like mulch probably, a leaf, I don't know, a branch, a little bit of a mistletoe I see here flying around. So it is generally a good idea to really rake it over and just remove all of the things that are still lying on top of it. Because all of that stuff is going to break down and this is not good for the lawn at all. Next thing you can tell are all these brown patches here. So all of this here is obviously dead material and it's good to remove it because this is never going to come back to life. It's brown, it's dead. This is normally if you have an ornamental grass, you would cut it back and this is why you rake it over and you can even tell I'm not pulling hard and it already comes off. So all of this is something that should not stay in your lawn. You really try to remove it. And then if I just swing over here, you get to see there are also some patches of moss in here. And it's also a good idea trying to get the moss out because you really want to make sure that your lawn has the ability to breathe and come back to a lovely full lush green stage. The tool that I'm going to use most for today's project is definitely the rake here. So just a normal garden rake. I think most of you guys have it anyways. Alfie already sees it because she got quite familiar with this when I was collecting leaves and it was great fun for her to chase it. So let's see how excited you will be today with the little project ride. All I do is basically just rake it over. I also have a metal appliance just in case if it doesn't work so well with a plastic. I need to see. I really think I might even use the metal one. Um, so all you do is very very simple really firm it in and just rake over it bit by bit and try to get out as much dead material as you possibly can. The other tool that I have, and this is a little more radical and also heavier, this is something to get moss out. So you can tell it is a little sharp here towards the end actually. And this is specially for lawn. It's already bent here in one area. And all you do is, and especially in those areas where you have thick layers of lawn, you really get in there, firm it in and work your way through. And then it almost like scoops up the moss. So if you lift it up again, all the moss is kind of like lying on top of here. So you could just like get rid of it into your wheelbarrow straight away. So this is actually a quite nice tool and I've used it in some of the areas, but mainly in autumn actually. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to use it today. What I'm going to do now is start in that area there because if you saw some of my previous videos we are thinking about removing the entire turf here because it is very uneven. The vowel is in here, the mole was crazy in here, it's full of weeds on top of it. So I feel I do not want to spend too much time into something that might go anyways this year. So I will start right where you are standing now and work my way all the way to the back of the garden and see how far I come because I still want to do the entire island bed when it comes to the edging.
I write big parts over and this is a look that I was hoping to get. And yes, I know it looks quite scruffy now, but this is exactly what you actually want to achieve. Because what happens now is you have almost these like patches of bare soil. And in here was a lot of dead material, moss, like a felt of old lawn basically. And by getting all of that out, now a lot of sun can come in here. Air ventilation can come in here, sun can come in here. So this is perfect. I really know that this is a good thing. Next thing that I'm gonna do now is focus on this here. I'm happy to finally start with the edging. Let me just tell you, the afternoon sun is so warm and amazing. It's just so beautiful to be out here. But now I really want to focus on the edging and that is really an exciting project actually because it's nothing when you go through a garden and you say oh look at those wonderful edges but once the edges are not looking nice and crisp you kind of recognize it and you kind of go like mm, that looks a little like not so nice maybe. So I think it is really worth spending your time there and doing a good thorough job. Uh, first, I want to show you how I've always done it so far and this is the method on how my parents have done it in the past as well. So I've already prepared my bucket of tools that I need. First tool and pretty much the most important one is a garden knife. Looks just like a normal kitchen knife. Maybe the blade is a little bigger and more sturdy I would say. My parents, they also used at one point kind of like old kitchen knives that they didn't need or use for the kitchen anymore because they were like, before we throw it away, we can always just use it in the garden. Then the second tool is one of these like special scissors for anyways making sure that the edges of your lawn are always looking nice and crisp. So this is also one that I really like to work with. And then the last tool, this is just something that I do, a rubber hammer. And the reason for that is quite simple. Here in this particular uh, border, the stones sit a little lower compared to the lawn. So when I cut it, there is this harsh border between the lawn and the stones. And I personally don't like that look. So I would just come in with a rubber hammer and just gently hammer over the edge of the lawn to kind of like mold it into a little lovely softer shape. So it just naturally um, moves down into the stones. And this is just something that I really like and enjoy as a look. So what I will do now is just show you up close how I actually do it. I hope the audio will be okay because as I said in some of my previous videos, the neighbors have a farm and with this weather they are quite busy with a tractor. But I think it'll be all right. So first thing that I do is I come in and just remove all of the mulch. Back it goes into the flower bed. Step number one. And then you can tell this is just really not looking nice here. So obviously what I do is I come in with a knife and then I just cut pretty much one centimeter away from the stone edging, following the line of the stone edging. And you'll be surprised when you do this, how fast the grass is going to grow back into this one centimeter that you just dripped off. Just like that. And then what I do is I take the knife like this with a blade facing to my direction and I just come in and remove basically everything that I just cut off into the bucket it goes. Let me just quickly do it. And then you can already tell that the edge does not look really neat now because you still have a lot of grass that is like a different heights and just, just not really crisp and clean still. So all what I would do now is come in with these scissors here and just open them really, really handy with this little orange lever here. And then just cut right along the edge. And even though I said in the beginning of my video, it's not a good time to cut the grass. I'm not really cutting the major part of the grass. I'm just making sure that this part of it is like looking a little neat. And then I come in with a rubber hammer and just really gently firm it in and make sure that the edge is just looking a little nicer. Still, it looks messy, obviously. So this is the last tool I forgot to show you, the brush. So all I do now is really come in with my brush and make sure that it's really looking nice. And you can tell now quite easily, by the way, that there's even sometimes grass growing in between the stones. And this is also what I would try to remove now, if I manage it, so that it does not grow into the border. But I think, this looks so much better. I mean, in comparison, I hope you get to see it. This is how it used to look and this is how it is looking now. So much nice. I can't wait to finish the entire island bed. 
I also found a new garden tool and this was one of those moments when you're in the garden center, you're browsing and you discover something and then it is in the back of your mind for quite a while and this was in the back of my mind for quite a while and I always thought like, is it really needed? But yesterday I saw it again and I was like, yes, it is needed. I want to try it. So normally how you would use it is to edge your lawn and if you do not have kind of like an edging like stone, brick, wood, whatever. Um, this is really if you only have your lawn facing next to your border. So you would just come in and cut it in a nice straight line. And how this works is it is a half circle, a little of a blade here. So it's a little sharper towards the end here. And then here you have this angle where you can step on basically to push it into the ground. I think this is quite smart. I hope this works because this morning I thought, Okay, the stones are not so heavy. Hopefully they're hammered in well, but I'm still going to give it a try. Oh, that works really nice. The stones are not moving at all. Oh, this is good. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is so much nicer and easier than trying to cut everything with a knife along the line, the border. Oh, this is good. Honestly, this excites me. I can tell. Obviously, I still need to clean up everything here and come in again on my knees and just, just do the rest of it. But for the actual cutting, I will definitely use the tool. This is so exciting. Edges are done and this is always such a difference. I'm telling you, I'm just gonna walk with you onto the terrace now, onto the upper deck and show you the difference because once the edges are clean again, you really get to see how the flower beds or the borders basically curve through the garden. This is so wonderful. So before I do the fertilizer, which I've already prepared here, let me just quickly show you how it looks now. Oh, you guys, isn't that one nice view into the garden? in the afternoon sun with a green dot of the sun flare included, obviously, but you really get to enjoy the view through the garden all the way into the landscape at the back. I just love this vista. And this is also why I really like to take my time and focus on having clean edges here. So you really get the difference of like clean, fresh edges and not so nice and crisp and clean edges. Because now I think you really get to see the lines of the garden again and of the flower beds and also can appreciate them a lot better, especially at this time of the year. You know, once all the perennials start and kick in and the grasses, you don't have these defined lines that much anymore. But now at this time of the year, I just really love to see the difference. Still need to remove the soil here, obviously, from the mold pile. But I also need to tackle the other side as well, obviously. But that's going to happen another day. What I need to do and want to do now is really get my fertilizer on the ground. So this is how it looks like. It is kind of like brown, it's kind of like grit when you look at it. And what I do is like, I have this special machine thingy here with a handle. So I could just walk with that through the garden, put all of the um, fertilizer in here. And then on a the side, there is a little lever where I can define how much of the fertilizer actually makes it through these holes here. So you can really define how much fertilizer you bring out onto your lawn. So what I'm gonna do now is fill that in there. 
If you think about fertilizing your lawn, now's a good time of the year to do spring fertilizing because this normally happens in between March and May roughly and this is exactly the time that we're at right now. Most of the fertilizers, at least this one, they are made of phosphate. So how this works is this is looking like little pieces of gravel actually and they react with rain. So when moisture comes in, it breaks down and gently the phosphate works its way into the ground and that reacts with the roots of the lawn because phosphate Phosphate encourages your lawn to build new roots and stronger roots and this is exactly what you want to happen at this time of the year because obviously the grass in general is still dormant so you're not going to see a lot of fresh growth now but you encourage all this lovely new roots to form so when the temperatures are rising again the grass is prepared very well so it can really come back with a strong new and lush looking lawn and this is exactly what you want to have. All I'm going to do now and this is super easy actually it's kind of like mowing your lawn I just walk along with my little thingy here, like this, pushing it in front of me. But before I'm going to do it, I just quickly want to take the time and show you those projects that I did yesterday because I'm afraid that I'm running out of daylight at one point. Do you remember my video where we were dividing and planting and potting iris? Well, I finally came in with the gravel now. I drove to the hardware store and bought gravel. Yes, it is white. That was the only one that I could get my hand on. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know, ancient Grecian temple or something. So when I put it on there, yeah, I needed to giggle myself a little bit over it, but I thought, you know what, better than nothing. So at least the rhizomes, they're sitting idle here. They're exposed to the full sunshine, really looking good, couldn't be happier. So that was one of the jobs where I'm like, yes, check. The next thing I did is I finally leveled out this path here. Alfie enjoys it as well. And when she walks in now, because I mulched it, she doesn't get dirty feet anymore. Oh, this is so great. You have no idea. So remember in the video where I build the raised beds together with you, I said already, okay, I need to focus on this area. And this is exactly what I did. So I just removed some soil, made sure that it's completely straight and dead level. I put some asters here already. This is my favorite variety, Aster Asram. And I ordered some shrubs. So there are three standing here behind the raised bed and one already there, which I intend on planting there. So I can tell you at one point there will be a little planting video. Hope you're excited to see what I actually bought. And the next thing I did, that was quite important actually, I already started putting in extra beams on the outside here because soil was shifting a little bit and it started to push outside. One thing that I was scared of a little bit, but I think now it is safe and sound. It's all leveled. I've dug through the entire soil here again. So it's really nice and lofty. And then I finally utilized all of these like planks actually that came from the railing from our terrace that we were not using anymore in the end. So I thought I could just use them perfectly here so I could actually step, step on them and don't need to step on the soil in between where I want to plant my vegetables. So I thought this is definitely a nice way of upcycling something. The little explorer gets excited because she really loves to go outside of the property and play on the farmland. And I'm always a little scared when I see her running around there, but at least the farmland is prepared. Now you can see it's like they came in with a tiller, so I know nothing's really going to happen here anymore. But what I did is, and now you might think, okay, boy's gone completely crazy. All of these are bearded iris. And all of them, they were initially planted here on one of these terraces when I didn't really have a plan for what to do. So they were all planted up here. But now that I really made up my mind and I know what I want to do with the area, I was like, okay, they're not really making sense anymore there because they're all variety called English Cottage, which grows amazing here. But whenever I divide them, I always have so much left over and I can't possibly throw it away. And I thought, okay, what to do with that? So yeah, technically this is kind of like no man's land outside of the property finally now. But I thought, you know what, before weeds are growing there, I just put the iris there and then they can come to flower and maybe I can come in and... At least take them for some cut flowers or, yeah, just utilize them again or at least look at something nice. Could a day possibly end more beautiful than with this warm, gorgeous late afternoon sun? Yes, I know this side on my face has no color on the video now, but you know what? That side of my face is nice and warm and this is all that matters now for me because I can tell you I feel the temperatures are dropping again. But I had a wonderful time with you in the garden today and I kind of feel this was almost like a two-in-one video because yes, mainly we focused on the lawn obviously, but then I could still show you those things that I did yesterday. And honestly, doing those things yesterday and not filming it, it almost felt like betraying you a little bit, but then I thought, 
I've already dedicated an entire video to iris, so showing you how I transplant iris, that wouldn't have been very interesting. And you've also seen me moving soil from A to B in the garden multiple times already emulsing it, so that wouldn't have been really interesting. So I think it was just so much nicer to just show you the final result now and tell you how excited I am. When the point finally arrives when I can really use the area, because the temperatures are still too cold, I can't possibly plant anything out in the veg garden yet, but I think probably in a month and a half from now, there is a time when I can finally get in there. How exciting. What I'm going to do now is still I need to fertilize the rest of the lawn. I hope that you had fun in today's video and I hope maybe I could encourage you to also take care of your lawn a little bit. Maybe now that point is also higher on your own priority list. Up until then, hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Take care guys. Bye.